Johnny Mac with your daily comedy news. The late night host weighed in on Afghanistan. Stephen Colbert came in with a pointed observation saying, We've had troops there for 20 years. They fought, they sacrificed, their family sacrificed so that we wouldn't have a terrorist attack in America planned in a foreign country. Why should our soldiers be fighting radicals in a civil war in Afghanistan? We've got our own on Capitol Hill. Seth Meyers, the Taliban, entered the city of Kabul and took control of Afghanistan's presidential palace. Most Americans watched in horror, while some Americans watched for tips. Yikes. Stephen Colbert, as recently as last month, an overwhelming majority of Americans, 70% or more, supported Joe Biden's withdrawal. 70%. You know how few things 70% of Americans agree on? I think it's this and extra cheese, which also often ends up badly and faster than you planned. And Colbert, on July 8th, Joe Biden said a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan was not inevitable and highly unlikely. This is the most inaccurate prediction from a president since Abe Lincoln said, see you after the play. Yikes. From the laugh button, Sebastian Maniscalco's cooking show on Discovery Plus picked up for a second season. Now, the second season will premiere November 16th. Checking the watch, it's August 18th. TV shows take a couple minutes to produce. I think this was already in the bag. Maniscalco's show only debuted last Thursday. Let's say it had boffo ratings. That's a quick pickup. This must have been in the can already. For season two, Sebastian will revisit his former life as a bartender to create a signature cocktail for Whitney Cummings. He'll also dig into the questions of why kids are picky eaters, discover how noodles are used in cuisines around the world, and explore the food habits of dogs with Caesar Milan. Is that a cooking show? What's going on? We're stretching a little bit here. Hey, why not? We like Sebastian Maniscalco. Joe Rogan on his own podcast was talking about how Kanye West wanted to redesign Joe Rogan's studio. Before he came on, there was a point in time where he wanted to redesign my studio. He's like, I want to redesign a studio. I want to do it somewhere else. I was like, okay. All of a sudden, we're on FaceTime, and he starts showing me sketches he already has of the new studio that he wants to design. He was making a studio like a womb, this big, crazy studio. He had wild ideas. His brain, it's like he's on jet fuel, just constantly going. From NME.com, your home for comedy news, stand-up comedian Bob Saget has apologized after he blocked a number of car seat headrest fans on Twitter. I read this story four times. Apparently, car seat headrest is some sort of musical act. And he's not actually fighting with fans of headrests on your car seats. The incident that sparked the social media situation began over a decade ago when car seat headrest mastermind Will Toledo released his album 4, including a song called The Ghost of Bob Saget, which is a reference to Ass Castle, a comic created by a friend of Toledo's. I'm telling you, I'm reading this, and I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Are you following this? In relation to the comic, which had Saget's ghost as a character, Toledo sang in the song, Last night I was haunted by the ghost of Bob Saget. He said, you're more or less than a slur that rhymes with Saget and begins with F. I put on a dress and followed him to heaven, but first I gave him oral sex outside the 7-Eleven. I cleaned up the language there. Over the past few days, the song has resurfaced online, and fans have been discussing it on Twitter. As a result, many of them tweeted about how they were blocked by Bob Saget. After the news of Bob Saget blocking the fans led his name to begin trending on Twitter, I'll remind you while we're having this fight here, um, Afghanistan is melting down, there's a climate crisis, but you know, car seat headrest versus Bob Saget is trending on Twitter. I'm glad we're all focused here. After... Bob Saget's name began trending on Twitter. Bob Saget apologized and sent well wishes to car seat headrest. Saget said, apologies to all the people I've blocked over the years. If I could block myself, I would. And sending car seat headrest my very best. Today's daily comedy news is brought to you by Travel Is Back, my casual travel podcast. I tell you about a place I've been and what I like to do there this week. Montreal. Next week, Seattle. Travel is back wherever you get your shows. From Variety, Vice TV will debut too soon. Comedy after 9-11. That'll debut September 8th. The documentary features interviews with entertainers, including David Cross, Nathan Lane, and Mark Marin, about the struggle to reestablish humor's place in the aftermath of 9-11. The documentary's title takes its name from the response Gilbert Gottfried received after cracking a joke about the airline attacks 
Shortly after they occurred, he's also in the documentary. So are Janine Garofalo, Matthew Broderick, Asif Manvi, Rob Riggle, Cedric the Entertainer, Chris Kattan, Louis Black, and Doug Stanhope. There's a crew. It explores how stand-up comedians, Broadway performers, late-night hosts, and SNL cast members helped audiences laugh even in the darkest of days. Russell Peters says, as a guy known for his disregard for political correctness, I'm really happy to be part of this entertaining and introspective dive into the proper time to comment on dramatic events, which from a comic's point of view is rarely ever too soon. Too soon comedy after 9-11 on Vice TV September 8th. They'll also screen it at the Hollywood Boulevard Chinese Theater on September 11th at 2.30 p.m. Today, the city of Los Angeles is declaring Brody Stevens Day. Brody Stevens, a quintessential and beloved presence on the L.A. stand-up circuit, passed away from suicide in early 2019. The particular date of 818 makes sense as it's the area code for the San Fernando Valley. On stage, he would often repeat the phrase 818 till I die. The ceremony will be held today at Reseda Park at 2 p.m. Friends and fans will meet up at Brody's signature park bench there between the duck pond and the baseball field. The event is being described as a beautiful day to honor our friend who represented the Valley to the fullest and impacted so many with his comedy, personal journey and sports. From the mirror, Ricky Gervais has confirmed spoilers for Afterlife Season 3. It's not a terrible spoiler, but if you don't want to be spoiled, you can get out. I'll give you three, two, one. Ricky Gervais has confirmed that everyone's favorite Afterlife character will not die. That's your spoiler. That's right. Brandy, the German Shepherd, will not be killed off in the third season of the British comedy. Ricky Gervais tweeted, Thanks for making Afterlife the most watched British comedy in the world. Season 3 is the best yet. Also, the dog does not die. Good girl. The dog is played by Antilly the Wonderhound and is a professional stunt dog who has appeared on Doc Martin and helped bring the robot dogs of Kingsman the Golden Circle to life. Antilly the Wonderhound has also appeared on Paul O'Grady's For the Love of Dogs and performed live on Britain's Got More Talent. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow this show on. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your shows. If you enjoy me, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. Meet you back here tomorrow.